Are you too scared or don't have enough time to contribute to open source? Well, you should because it'll be better than your CV. Here are not only five tips to contribute to open source, but I will actually do an open source contribution. But you may think, why? Because it will not only help the community, but you will also learn how other teams manage their projects, their coding standards and their practices. And it will also help you with your day-to-day -day private project work for your company or your client because it follows the same workflow. If a project is private, it follows the same workflow as if it was public. The only difference is when it's public, people outside the team, the wider team can also contribute. I really believe that you shouldn't think, why should I make this project open source? All projects should be open source by default. And then only you need to think, why should I make it private? It should be the edge cases. And putting your password, private tokens, SSH keys, any type of private keys in the repo is no reason to make the repo private because that is really bad practice and you shouldn't put anything private in a repo, even if the repo is private. Getting into open source and contributing will really help you get hired, help you get bigger clients. It will open so many doors. Is social coding. Not only will it bring more awareness to your, you and your great skills, but it also push your skills to the next level. Tip number one, it is not just about code. You can make so many contributions to the open source community and open source. In addition to code, it can also include raising a defect. It can be uh, improving documentation. And we all know documentation is usually the worst thing and it always gets left behind. I don't know why everyone forgets about documentation, but it's a great way to get into contributing to open source and so many people will thank you for it. How many times have you read some documentation and you think, hmm, this is not quite up to date, the code has moved forward? Or well, you could contribute that back and so many people will be grateful for that. You could add more ideas, raise defects, you could improve the automated test, get higher code coverage. Tip number two, it doesn't have to be a huge project. Don't try and find the biggest project on GitHub and make a contribution to that. That, that will be more difficult. You could contribute to smaller projects, to your friend's projects, to my projects. I actually have a repository for people just to get started in making a contribution, to follow the workflow, where you actually just add your name to the bottom of the readme, and that will allow you to practice the workflow from forking the project to making a change, all via the GitHub UI. And then once you've done that, you can move to the next level, and do it all via the command line. And you'll also see people sharing their open source projects on Twitter. Have a look at those projects, make some contributions, make some suggestions. It's a really great way to get involved. And the project we're going to contribute to in this video, I actually came across on Twitter. And my tip number three is keep an eye on Twitter and see what projects people are sharing. Usually people who have open sourced their projects, uh, they are sharing them on Twitter to get some more coverage. You will contribute to those. Tip number four, contribute to the projects that you use, be it a library or a framework. There are so many, especially in the JavaScript world, you include lots of projects and they include lots of projects. If you're reading the documentation, does something doesn't quite make sense and you need to add some more information to it, add some examples, make those improvements. You're using those projects and libraries and frameworks on a daily basis. So you probably feel quite familiar with them. And one thing that happened to me is I made a contribution, I improved the documentation, and then when I came back to that similar library, I, I read the documentation, I thought, oh, I'm glad someone put that line in. And I went to get blamed to see who wrote that line, and it was me. I mean, imagine on someone else's project, I have the same problem, can't figure out how to do it, go to the documentation, find the perfect line. And I had written that a few months ago. What a great feeling. Tip number five, just think little and often. Don't try and raise a big contribution or raise a big PR. Actually, the smaller PRs are more likely to get accepted. If it is one or two lines, that's great. Don't think it's not enough. I'm not gonna bother doing it. No one's gonna be interested. That one line could save one person a couple of hours of searching on the internet. And if that saves one person a couple of hours, Imagine if you've got under 10,000 people using that project to do make that contribution. No contribution is too small. If you are fixing a typo, fix that typo. Because for someone who speaks English or is really good in English, they might realize it's a typo and just understand what it means. Someone else who's new to English might think, well, what does this word mean? It's spelled slightly differently. 
So it does help, we've got to be more inclusive and lower the barrier to entry in using these open source projects and contributing to them. And if you, if you make 10 minutes of contributions per day or per week, imagine in a month, in a year, how big the contributions will be. You'll have so many and you'll have that lovely history. So when you do apply for that next job, then people can look at your GitHub and see what you've been up to, see how you interact. It's not just about the actual contribution, it's also how you interact, how you comment, how you react to other people's comments on the social coding platform GitHub. And even the good recruiters now are headhunting people from GitHub. So it's really important to get yourself out there on GitHub in open source. Okay, enough talking, let's make an open source contribution. So I'm actually gonna take my friend's project, Amina. She shared it on Twitter yesterday that she's made a new open source project about the tech events and conferences she wants to go to, to speak at over the next few months. So let's make a contribution. The contribution I want to make is I actually want to put a link on the list of uh, events so that people can go and look at those events quite easily without having to search for them. So first of all, you go to the repo. You click on the file that you want to edit. In this case, it's the readme.md. The file will open and you click on the edit icon at the top right. It looks like a pen. Now you're in the edit page. Make the changes that you want to make. There is a preview at the top left if you want to see your changes. Then when you're happy, scroll down and there'll be the commit area. Add a short commit message, usually less than 50 characters. Just explain what you did. Don't say what file you changed because that will already be in the pull request and the commit. Once you click commit, it will take you through to the next page and show you those changes just to make sure you're happy with them, to so do give them a check. When you're happy, click on create pull request. Now you go to the final page where I give you a body where you can actually add a bigger description of what you did if you wanted to. I really advise adding a screenshot to here. To add an image or a screenshot is really easy, you just drag and drop into the description. Now you actually create the pull request and it will notify the project owner. And now you wait. You wait for the person to get notified, to get back to you, maybe raise some comments and suggestions, or they'll accept your pull request. Worst case, even if they close your pull request and decide not to use it, you still get the contribution. So it's win-win. See, it's really, really simple to make an open source contribution. You can do it directly on the GitHub platform. So there are no excuses. If you want to make more complex changes so you can test them and you want to make changes to multiple files, you will have to do this by forking the project, cloning the project on your local machine and using the command line or using a Git tool. If you would like to see that and that would be useful to you, then put a comment below and uh, we can do that in a future video. If you want to see the pull request that I made, the link is below in the description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to support me. It's free and share it with your friends as well. They might like it too. So to conclude, there are no excuses. Make sure you contribute to open source and the small contributions do really help. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will make sure I answer them. Open source is for you.